Hello guys, as every month I present you the video about uh, free factions, free decks for each faction with different leader abilities. One meta, one of meta, one meme, for, so you can climb with. As always, this is like every season and I thought we can start with something different because last two seasons ago and last season I complained a lot the, about lack of diversity in the meta. I really complained about it and I was, uh, usually I'm trying to be positive, but when I uh, see something problematic i try to point it out and i also like to do the opposite i want to also give credit to cd project when it's uh, when it's due when when they deserve it and a lot of people i see a lot of negative comments about the current meta but i want to actually say something different and for this i have data uh, prepared from my teammate andre andre uh, to show you that the meta is actually pretty good at the moment. If you can see, uh, here is the top 500 uh, at the moment uh, for September 13th um, data on the current season of top 15, 500 people. Of course, you need to keep in mind that it's not very competitive season, this season. It only matters uh, from the competitive perspective for only tiny amount of people on the very, 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 very top of the ladder. However, most of people that play Gwent and you know look for the deck and complain are not in this uh, category. So I think uh, we still should see if the diversity is there because we play on the ladder. We want to have fun. We want to have fun with a climb. As as you can see, uh, Nilfgaard, Syndicate, Skoyatel, and Monsters are pretty much at the exactly same uh, win rate, and Skellige is not that far off. It's a, it's a difference of like less than one percent. And then we have uh, No Enar, which is uh, um, people all say that it's garbage and it's worst uh, faction ever, but it's in the strong 49.5% uh, win rate. It's below this uh, magical threshold of 50%, but it's not that uh, uh, far away. Also, if, if you go to the like uh, current data, uh, there are some days when NR is actually rocking, when there are some uh, decks that people find uh, that work good on the ladder. I can also show you the... Um, other stats when you can see uh, that this is win rate of top uh, uh, when you choose like top four factions so uh, when you finish the placement it checks only top four uh, top four of your factions and if, if you can see that if people chose uh, NR it's actually at 52 percent win rate which is not uh, bad it's really competitive uh, like other factions only the syndicate going a tiny bit ahead with one percent more so talent really still strong but other factions are playable so i just do want to show you that the current patch is actually very very diverse in terms of faction my only worry is that it's uh, not that diverse in form of leader abilities the factions yes we have a nice balance of factions we got some nerfs some buffs last season and it worked it really worked. The problem is we didn't have uh, many of changes in the leader abilities and uh, this shows as well. However, I want to credit CD Projekt here and show that we actually have very diverse meta in terms of uh, faction. In terms of faction, we are in a good place. Now let's go to the decks. I will talk about each faction a little bit deeper in this uh, cut, in this section. So again, I will show you three decks for each faction. So let's start with monsters. And for monsters, first the competitive deck is a uh, force of nature. I will try one hint. I will try to go quicker this time because always it takes me forever to talk about this. Okay, so force of nature. It's the same deck that you've seen like two seasons ago or one season ago. It's a Koshay deck. I, even last season when Gerny was OP, I still prefer the Koshay, to be honest. Mamuna got nerfed, but it completely that doesn't matter. And this is pretty standard deck. It has a nice long and short round in uh, both because of Koshay. It has a nice finisher of Ozrael and Ikern and of course Mamuna. Uh, that can also be used to bleed uh, your opponent. And of course, self eaters nerfed, by, uh, but still can generate a lot of points. Uh, I like Imlerit in this uh, version pretty much because it can be nice with Ikern, but it also can make you not pl even play um, Griffin, because sometimes it's a little bit awkward where to play Ikern, but with the use of Lim Imlerit, you just you can just never use it, you know? You can just never play it. Uh, just one, you eat one and second you uh, summon with, uh, with Mamuna, uh, just ignore the um, 
ignore the Sabbat and you have and you don't have to even play Griffins. I think this deck is very very good and it's and it's basically shits on any deck that is not prepared for it. So for second deck I wanted to include Frost because it's just popular, uh, just because of its popularity. But I can't. This this deck is so boring for me. It's uh, it's the not this deck. Don't look at this deck. Uh, I'm talking about Frost at the moment. Frost for me is the the worst deck building deck that you can get because it's basically type in wild hunt into your uh, into the search and add everything it's basically uh, add everything if you want a deck like this you can of course play it it's not it's not bad it's not uh, op it's a, a very good state finally wild hunt is playable but the deck building of this is so boring just add all the wild hunt and add mamuna and that's it so I'm gonna talk about something different that actually got me to rank 1 this uh, this season from rank 2 to rank uh, 1 or even from rank 1 to pro rank I actually don't remember I climbed with big boy carapace why? I have still no clue but why I chose this deck? because I met a lot of Nilfgaard Nilfgaard is really popular especially on the rank 3 to 1 and I met a lot of Assimilate and the problem of this deck against Assimilate is that you absolutely have no bronzes and your opponent really struggled to copy your, your stuff. Also, you can block all of the um, locks and everything with Carapace, and you just finish with big cards, and you just play with big cards, and your opponent can struggle. This is one of the weirdest decks that I've ever played, but it's working. And, and the third deck, you can never go wrong with Sukubus if, uh, if, you, if you know me, but I really wanted to discover if Ruin is, uh, is good or bad, and it's playable it's a little bit still too expensive and too slow for its uh, effect because uh, sukubus is just better uh, in a short round and in the long round you usually it's very hard to find a balance between death wish and uh, an amount of consume even if it's not even in the deck building uh, perspective because sometimes you have games when you only draw death wish sometimes you have games when you on only draw consume so it's it's very awkward but this deck is extremely fun to play i absolutely love playing this deck it's so much fun and also you have the hidden uh, power of f and onion zoop that you can use on double ruin from karantir and you basically has, uh, have imperial diplomacy that gives you gold basically or uh, other in other words uma curse that you play for five provision which is pretty decent uh, so yeah if you want to try this deck it's super fun uh, I still, this deck would be so much better in, if the interaction with Werrat would be different for Ruain and Sukubus. But according to CD Projekt, we can never have the correct interaction because uh, the way the cards are coded. If you don't know what I mean, basically if Werrat eat uh, Ruain or Sukubus, they will uh, come back to the board the end of next turn, not immediately. Because of uh, turn, uh, end of turn effects work like this. It sucks. But the deck is still fun. Now let's go to NR. Yes, as I said, NR is uh, in theory the worst deck, the worst faction. But if you want to climb hard, and especially if you want to play in any small tournament, any, any big tournament, this is a good deck if you know that you are going first because it can punish your opponent just uh, with classic combo of Donmir and Foltest. I hate this deck because I hate commandos, they are so boring to me, but if you want something very powerful for Enor, this is probably the deck and you can high roll your victories and you can often 2-0 your opponents, but it's very vulnerable to uh, consistency because you uh, don't, you are not very consistent. I also have chosen with, uh, to go with, uh, to show you the version without on Aeromancy because I don't really like it, but I like the inclusion of Hubert uh, Rake because it's a nice additional tempo tool. This deck is good, but it's boring. I will show you something more fun. Something more fun, number one, is mobilization. That I, I think I put this in every video since like last, for like four months now. But it's amazing. It's super fun to play. It's super winning the games. It is just overall a very powerful deck. It really, every time I play this deck, I win like 80% of my matches. No, no joke, I just love this deck. I think I played it so much that I really know how to play this deck. And it's really powerful uh, and it really can uh, tow uh, uh, a lot of things and can outgrid a lot of opponents. The beautiful change that got into this deck is uh, Draug, that actually worked quite well against some swarmy deck like uh, 
syndicate uh, like squatter but also can work against syndicate because it can transform uh, something like bounty uh, if you want to uh, go with at least a little bit less mimi deck you can cut botchnik you can cut the drought you can add cards like karate heatwave and baron and it's gonna be also very powerful people also uh, often ask me why you put valibor while well, this is 11 for uh, like 10 12 points while, while miruna is uh, mamuna is uh, better points but the thing is nr is always struggling for having a nice finisher and having a lot of uh, uh, points as a finisher a lot of like raw points not engines they sometimes don't want engines they, they just want raw points and this you drop and it's immediately 10 points because most of the time you can find something to damage it just 10 points and it's point slam of 10 points which nr really struggles again that's why it's very good and that's why also gerhardt is in every single most uh, nr deck uh, this deck is fun to play i always loved it and it's Good to go. And the last deck uh, is a Shield Wall Mage deck that I uh, have been playing a lot recently on stream and I absolutely fell in love with this deck. You have so many engines that your opponent basically ran out of uh, removal and then you can get a lot of value from, from your finishers. I'm actually super surprised by Tisaya because I was always a big hater of this card. I always said this is garbage, but turns out when it's 10 provision, it's super hard to get, super easy to find value from her and she can give you a swings of like 30 points. It's crazy. Why you, she's here? Uh, why she's, for example, why Idilko is here? Just because of uh, the value that it can provide from Tisaya, but also because this new card, Matkayan, new card, is, is a dual card that gives you more points, but you cannot kill anything. It's very interesting uh, mechanic, and it's just a value card, but uh, alongside with Idilko, with uh, like Patience card and with uh, Tisaya, it can swing for so many points. I had a lot of games where I thought, okay, I lost. Then I do my combo with like Tisaya, Idilko, Patience card, uh, I don't know, Margarita, Sile, because these are all mages. And then it's like, what? I just won. How? Turns out it's just, uh, it's, uh, this card can generate a lot of points. And overall, this deck is super, super fun to play. With Skeletal, I had a little bit of a problem because basically every faction, every uh, good deck is Precision Strike just because of its uh, potential swing, plus its pinging mechanic that is very w good against some of the engines. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of also versions of Precision Strike indeed. You can go Unitless, you can go Maddock, you can go Control, you can go... Uh, just value, you can go with Feign Death, and you can go with my favorite of them all, which is Azur. Uh, Azur is a, a little bit of a Mimi card, of course, but now it finds it, it, its place, and I think this deck is uh, super fun to play as well, even though it's meta, and I usually hate meta decks. If you know me, you know, you, you know this, I really hate meta decks. This is actually a meta deck that I enjoy and I really like. It's super fun to play. Uh, and uh, it is a little bit tricky to play uh, super well, but it's not that super card at the same time. Uh, just you need to know how to time Azur and you do need to know when to commit what and not to commit too much and not too few things. Uh, and you need to be careful with Mulligan, but it's overall very fun to play deck and it's actually very powerful. Second deck, I think it's pretty decent, but uh, of course, Precision Strike outshines uh, them all. This is one of these problems I talked about uh, earlier without, with uh, uh, leader abilities being too strong, some of them. And I think Precision Strike just wins uh, a lot against uh, other uh, Skeletal um, leader abilities. But Dwarves can be decent because uh, we have a lot of these uh, control decks that want to ping you. And here you can counter them with just a lot of armor. And uh, these dwarves are, I did complain about wild hunt being boring because you just uh, play all uh, wild hunt units and that's it. This has the same problem. You just type in dwarf in the deck, in the deck building and you just add everything. That's why I'm not a big fan of it. You can of course change some dwarves here and there, but uh, that's my approach. I have random Arakas Venom. I still don't know why, but it can find a lot of value and it's just a decent deck. My problem? It's boring. And the deck that surprised me a little bit this season, because I went with 6-1 with this deck uh, on the stream, it's a Harmony deck. Uh, the changes to Sirsa make it finally uh, at least playable. And also, funny enough, this Dryad Ranger changed to 2 uh, instead of 1. 
actually sometimes matters because you often miss poison and then this card at least have some value and can ping something down which is not bad uh, panther helps a little bit uh, it's fine but it's still harmony needs something better than this card harmony still needs uh, saskia to be spawn and play uh please the project and but you can still enjoy harmony a little bit it, you, you can still win with games especially when you are not uh, trying to get to top 500 on pro rank but you just want to uh, rank up to like pro rank to pro rank uh, or like to rank five or something you can definitely try harmony it's fun deck to play and it's it's really decent next we have skellige and skellige has the same problem as uh Squirtle that the one leader ability is dominating and it's Reckless Flurry. However, I actually had a lot of success with different one here in this faction. So maybe it's not uh, the end of the world world yet. Uh, but first, a meta deck, uh, like for every faction, is Reckless Flurry. There are a lot of versions of this deck. The, there is a Witcher deck, there is Madog deck, there is a, like a discard deck, a discard uh, uh, package. Uh, deck but i witcher is my favorite i think i think it's the most fun because you also need to do some sequence sequencing it's not all about just uh, drop it everything like it's hot and that's it so that's why this deck um, i like i prefer this version and trail of grasses is actually very good card at the moment it's just basically parasite more flexible parasite in the witcher decks and it's pretty good with uh, your tiny witchers that come up from armor up or from Bear Witcher Quartermaster. You also have Toll Remover in, for top, in form of Axie, uh, Be uh, Junot, and Korat Heatwave, and a lot of points uh, and finishers with cards like Vesemil and Leo. This is pretty good deck, and it's pretty, f it's all right. The second deck is a little bit, uh, looks a little bit weird at the same, at the first glance, but I actually was winning a lot of with, with this deck on stream today, and it was uh, made by my teammate Arya, and uh, and she climbed with this uh, deck from what I know from rank 3 to 2 and she has a very good win rate with it and it's very fun to play. Uh, the idea is that you can have two of my favorite uh, archetypes in one deck which is Gedi and Dagur, my favorite archetype for Skellige of course. Uh, and you can commit actually one or another in one on two rounds because you can return them with Sigridas right and because you have that many of uh, uh, like Mm, win conditions you can you can waste some of them earlier which uh, uh, is a problematic sometimes for opponent also uh, the combo of offering of the sea and wild boar of the sea is amazing because first you damage everything with offering of the sea and then you deal everything twice uh, uh, with wild boar of the sea if you add dagger to the mix you can generate shit ton of points especially against decks like uh, Squirtle, you can let them swarm with Dol Banana sentries and then they will have a very bad day. And the last deck is something that I would... I never thought I would tell you, but it's a Pirate Onslaught deck. Yes, it's a Pirate Onslaught deck. Uh, I don't... I still don't get it, but I'm winning with this game, with this deck. Why? I don't know. It's just a lot of value for, for big units. You just play big boys with big point slam, you slam, you slam, you slam, and you win the game. Uh, it's a control deck, so it's uh, working quite well in the current meta. And turns out Onslaught is not that bad of the ability because you can uh, instantly uh, generate value for, for like Jenga or for like Uncrate Warriors, and you can line up Wild Boar of the Sea. The problem is that this, this, still, this leader still needs a little bit of a boost. We speculated with, uh, we talked with my audience that maybe it would be cool to make it uh, Blood First 5 deal 2, or maybe Adrenaline uh, 4 deal 2, or maybe Pierce Armor, something that uh, to make this uh, deck, the leader ability a little bit better. But to my surprise, it's actually not bad. And pirates are pirates, they are always fun to play. For Nilfgaard, uh, first deck I had to mention. I have to mention is it's Hyperfin uh, tactical decision. I love Hyperfin. I always love Hyperfin, but this version is just toxic. KW, why did I complain about my favorite deck? That's weird. Uh, it just vomits points. It's super consistent because of uh, tactical decision and snowdrop. Uh, it can fight for the board because of cards like Bleach Maker uh, and. Uh, like engines like Viper Witcher Adept and all of the big boys and then they you finish with a big amount of points. The problem of this deck is that it's very very 
uh, it plays the same every single game. So if you have a deck that can beat this deck, you will probably beat this deck because you know exactly what to expect. Uh, one Cantarella, one Ophir Merchant, and uh, this deck is just dead. And uh, short run when you cannot find any unit also can kill this deck. Uh, but on the other hand, if you cannot kill everything, uh, they will win you against you in the short round. Uh, when I think about it more, I actually kind of like this deck. I uh, it, it's uh, because it's hyper thin. And uh, if you want to give it a go, this is probably the, the Nilfgaard deck to go. However, it's very popular. It's very popular. If you don't like playing mirrors, don't play this deck. Next deck, another classic. It's uh, it's even hard to call it off meta deck because uh, Assimilate is just great. However, I will t tell you about the variation that you can use. And it's actually, uh, I, lo I love Assimilate. I'm just want to I want to say it right right now. I really like Assimilate because it's fun, uh, but uh, it's uh, kind of a little bit as popular at the moment. So if you again like with tactical decision, well. It's always like this with Nilfgaard. People just love Nilfgaard. Uh, but if you don't like Mirror, probably don't play this deck. You can add Cantarella if you meet other, um, a lot of other Nilfgaard decks to this deck. Uh, and if you want to make it extra spicy, you can actually make it a Shub deck. Because Shub and Redaya, as you can see, you don't even have that many of two offs. You can just cut uh, these cards and you won't be very sad about it. And you can make it Shupredaya, and uh, it's working quite uh, well because if you ever meet a mirror or any deck that is Shup and Redaya, Assimilate is so good then because you can uh, still with Arthur Terranova and uh, with, with help of Mage Torturer, you can steal another Redaya and another Shup, and it's just crazy. You add a sire to the mix and you play your ship again. And the last deck, okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, again, Enslave and then again Hyperfin, but I just love this deck. I really love this deck. I, uh, I test if this uh, works every season and it's still working. I won't talk about this much, but if you want a different Hyperfin, then I would suggest you uh, this. And in general, I want to just say that Nilfgaard has a lot of options. I just had to choose it because I love it. And the last faction, we have Syndicate. I was actually surprised. I played recently in the tourna Syndicate tournament and I thought that I would have zero ideas what to play, but I actually made a few decent decks. And first of all, I have to mention Line Pocket because this deck is, dominant, uh, is dominating for like five seasons now. Uh, I wanted to give it a little bit of a spin and I had added Damnation and Tavern Brawl to make it a little bit more spicy and a little bit more fun and it should work good against like uh, a Skellige that is very popular at the moment and maybe sometimes uh, Skoyatel because you can line up everything um, but this deck I, I'm sure you've seen it a lot so I won't talk about it uh, second deck I recently tried again Congregate and holy shit, it just vomits points. It can out-tempo your opponent in round one easily with a uh, card like Grand Inquisitor Helft. And then in round three, you can get, generate a lot of value with Igor and uh, Fallen Knight. What I noticed that a lot of damage currently is uh, random pinging, and random pinging usually don't deal well with Fallen Knight and with Igor. Of course, apart from Squirtle that can precision strike, but often I notice that they usually do it, uh, go for it in round one and then in round three they don't have it and they have a problem. So uh, you can actually get, generate a lot of value with Igor and if you ma met, met, meet other greedy matchup, you probably won because Fallen Knight just gonna generate a lot of power. And what I've noticed, it actually also works uh, quite well against Reckless Flurry if you meet a lot of Skelly Gap. Because you, it's super hard for them to snipe your big unit with like cards like Yonut, and they can only remove like one thing. Uh, and I always loved Swarm, and it's pretty fun to play. And for the last deck, it's actually one of my favorite decks this season that I never expected that I would make. Someone told me that there is no Shoop uh, Syndicate at all, so I decided to make it. And to make it extra spicy, I made it a Collusion as well. And turns out. It is not bad. It's just generate a lot of value from your cards. You can win one deck, one game with uh, one round with collusion, one round with uh, Redaya and Shub, 
and uh, it's a lot of value and it's uh, actually playable. Uh, it's fun deck to play uh, because you play this unique card like Sausage Maker, Boris, Walter, uh, that you don't see that much often on the on the ladder because uh, you cannot afford this super high expensive uh, uh, expensive uh, uh, gold that you usually see. Uh, so you have to go for something uh, more, more mid rangey uh, and yeah, it's basically unique, and you need to look. Uh, you need to really think about your play with you, which is fun. So that's it for the, today's video. I just want to again say that uh, I'm actually happy with the with the diversity of the uh, faction distribution in the current uh, meta. I think it's not a bad meta. I think it's pretty decent. We are just uh, probably bored of seeing uh, reckless flurry, uh, line pocket, tactical uh, decision and i don't know inspired zeal every everywhere i go it's probably the most uh, mostly that the, some of the leaders are uh, visible more than others but overall i'm pretty happy about this season and i can't wait for the next one with new cards thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time